Every single time I want to film a review video, the lawnmowers come out. Hey everybody, welcome back to Everyday Barbecue. My name is Mike, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Next Grill 36 inch gas griddle. This is one of those reviews that I've been telling you about that I'm going to do. I've got a few more lined up, but this is the next one in line, so this is the one we're going to get done today. Pretty excited to do this review after I went through the assembly process. One minute now before, before we get started. Uh, every time I come out to do a review video, I have neighbors that come outside and mow their lawns, put decks together, use hammers. So if it's a little bit noisy, uh, bear with me. I'm doing the best I can with audio. I have a wireless mic set up here and a boom mic on the other camera. So I'll try to choose the best audio from each clip when I edit, so just bear with me. So let's get started going through all the features one at a time. Now to start with for the assembly process, this was pretty easy to put together. It took my son and I about an hour or so. Uh, there was a couple little snafus in there, but it turned out to be things that we were doing wrong. So I really don't have any complaints uh, when it comes to how it went together. And it's constructed pretty well. Uh, the materials I would give probably slightly above average grade to. It's not ultra heavy, but it's also not cheap and tinny. So I kind of like the materials for the price of the griddle. Now the outside is all constructed with stainless steel, so that's going to be really good for weathering and longevity. And it also adds to the value when you consider the price point and what you get. We have a very heavy griddle top here. This is the very popular size, 36 inches. And I believe this is hot rolled steel, if I remember reading correctly in the uh, specs. But it's very heavy, very well constructed, and we're going to get into the seasoning process and we're even going to do a little cook on here before this video is over. But I'm going to try to get through it as quick as I can. Let's talk about the grease drain system. So you can see here in the back right corner of the griddle, that's where your grease drain is. Now underneath there, there's a little funnel with a pipe that goes down into a grease drip drawer, which I'll show you It's located on the back of the griddle. So this is mounted in the back. All the grease ends up in here. Very easy access from the rear to clean that up. They may sell foil pans for this to make it easy clean up, maybe like a foil pan liner. I'm not 100% sure. However, it shouldn't be too hard to clean up anyway. Now the back of this is fully exposed. It's one of those things I'm kind of impartial to. I kind of wish it was closed up and then I kind of like having the access back here. So to each his own on that. And you have a storage shelf here as well, which I'll show you from the other side for the doors. So when we open up these doors, propane tank here. So this shelf will give you a decent amount of storage underneath and on top. And it's all secured here with these doors, which by the way are pretty heavy. The magnets on these, by the way, they work very well. Uh, there was another grill I reviewed recently where the magnets were very weak. These hold the doors in very, very well. I also like the sleek design of the panel here with the burner knobs. There's a bottle opener here, and it does have an electronic ignition that runs off battery. Now there's two stainless steel shelves on both sides. This one has tool hangers. One thing I would have liked to see is that these would be collapsible and they're not, they're not collapsible. But you know, for most people, it's not gonna matter. For me, space is always a consideration. So I kind of like when I can compact it a little bit, but overall, uh, I'm not disappointed with that. And it is very well constructed. I mean, these are, these can hold quite a bit of weight. If I didn't already give the exact spec, the griddle top is 721 square inches of cooking space. Underneath the griddle top, there's four stainless steel burners. They're each 10,000 BTUs for a total of 40,000 BTUs of cooking power. One thing I'd really like to mention is this is a very comfortable cooking height for me. I'm about of average height, I'm 5'11", and this cooking height's very, very comfortable for me. So a lot of griddles are a little bit shorter than this. This is just under 39 inches for height, and it's really comfortable to me. While I'm giving exact specs, it's 25 inches in depth and 64 inches or around 64 inches in total width. Another question that people have very often about these griddles is if they're convertible to natural gas. This one is convertible to natural gas and they give you some little fittings with it that I, I don't know if you need more or not, but you can check more on that if you're somebody who wants to do it because it is capable of it. This thing's available at Home Depot right now. I believe it's a Home Depot exclusive. This is where I got most of my information on specs was off the Home Depot website. 
and I believe it's priced at $399. The warranty on this is five years on the burners against perforation and pretty much a one year limited on everything else, which seems to be the standard in the industry, to be honest. There's four wheels on this cooker. The two on the right side are swivel, so that's what gives you the ability to turn and the lock. The two wheels on the left side are just straight. They don't swivel, but they're plenty sturdy. All the wheels are plenty sturdy to move this around your porch or your patio or your deck. So that pretty much covers everything from top to bottom. Now I get a lot of questions because I've, I own several flat tops and I've reviewed a few and there's going to be more coming. There's already one on my deck waiting. But I get a lot of questions about seasoning the griddle top, cleaning it, and so on. So I'm going to go into that for you next. I'm also curious to test this grease strip design to see how effective it is because it's a little unorthodox I guess. I don't really know how to put it. I'm not saying it's not going to work, it's probably going to work fine, but I thought it'd be a good idea to test it. So the next step for us is going to be, I'm going to show you how to properly season this griddle top. When you get this, it's pre-seasoned with a coat of oil from the factory to keep it from, you know, having any sort of issues during shipping and while it's in storage, waiting for somebody to buy it and bring it home. So the first step is going to be to turn this on, kind of wipe that down a little bit with some warm soapy water. Then we're going to go through a seasoning process. I'll cook something small. And then I'll show you how I clean it up and season it for the next cook. Time to get started. So I've lit this up. I've got it running just under high. It's like a medium high on all four burners. And I want to wash off the top real quick before it gets too hot. So here I just have some warm soapy water and a wash rag that hopefully isn't going to leave any lint behind. We are just going to wipe this off real quick. Always be careful when you do this for your hands. One of the tricks you can use is a pair of tongs like this. And that should be good. That's just a quick rinse. Now I noticed in the booklet it didn't talk a lot about this initial seasoning process, so I wanna go into a little bit more depth with this. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it so that when you get yours and you bring it home, you're gonna know exactly how to do it. So we just gotta give this a few minutes to continue warming, and then we'll get going on that. Now I'm doing the very best I can here with lighting. You can see the sun is weird. I had to wait a little bit longer to film this today because we had noise in the background. So there's a little bit of shadowing, but you can see that this griddle top is smoking now. It's burning off that little bit of oil that was sent from the factory and it's starting to brown. And that's kind of what you look for when you start looking at it seasoning is that it's gonna turn a darker color. But because it's smoking, we can now safely go ahead and apply a little bit of oil a lot of debate on what oil you should use. I'm not going to tell you that it's the best, but I've used canola for the seasoning process on all my griddles and I've never had a problem. So much pollen out here today. So let's put a coat on here and I'm going to show you exactly how to apply it. One of the big mistakes I see people make is that they use way too much oil in this process. All you want to do is just get a nice thin coat on there like so. Now you get yourself about three paper towels, bunch them up with some tongs so that you're not touching this. And rub that oil into the griddle top. And you're gonna see it's gonna start smoking and that's fine, that's what you want. And you wanna get all the surfaces on this initial seasoning. So if you find that you need to add a little bit more oil, it's fine to do that, that's not a problem. You even want to get these edges on this initial seasoning. And the front area here, anything, any kind of griddle top surface except underneath. Definitely don't put this underneath. Okay, coat one is done. Now we're just going to let this smoke until it starts to get to be a thinner smoke. Then we know that the griddle top has absorbed the most of that oil. And then we'll go ahead and put on the next coat. So this has been burning the oil for about five minutes and the smoke is starting to thin out. I'm going to add another coat and then we'll probably do another coat. So I'm not going to drag you along for this whole process. Just know that this could take three to five coats. So I'm going to just do this until I know it's good to go. And then I'll bring you back and let you know how many times I did it. But just to show you, again, thin coat of oil. About three to four paper towels bunched up. And now spread the oil. Okay, so we've done four coats of that oil here, and as you can see, the top is nice and dark. There's just some areas around the edge that will fill in with seasoning over time when you cook. Now there's one more thing you can do to really finish off this seasoning process, and I'm gonna write a flat top cooking book one day. This next step will be rule one, page one. You 
always know when bacon was cooked on a flat top, every time. Okay, so for the last part of this, since I brought you this far, I might as well show you how I clean the griddle top when I'm done cooking, okay? Let's do that. You're just gonna basically scrape this top. Scrape all your excess down into your grease area. Once you've got all the debris scraped off, get some water. You'll just repeat this process. And this is how you'll know when your top is clean, is when you're barely picking anything up on the paper towel anymore. And the last process is just to spray this with a coat of spray canola. So it's that easy. Now you just let this cool off and you can cover it up. If you have another cover to put over it on top of this, you can do that. Make sure everything's cooled off first. Now let's check that grease tray and see how much of this stuff we caught. Now with cooking bacon, it's the one thing that tends to make the biggest mess and you can see we have no mess underneath. But right here, we have all that grease and grime. So testing with that bacon is a really good way to test that grease system and it seems to work fine. Now overall, I have to say that I'm happy with this for the money with the build quality, the stainless steel exterior, the griddle top, the lid which you know some do and some don't come with. I mean this model does but other brands some don't. So for the money, I have to say I think it's right in line. I think it's a good buy. So if you're interested in this model, they're available at Home Depot, go check them out. Take care. Till next time, I'll see you on the next episode.